fighter jets now being made available going from Poland over to Germany to be housed at a U.S. base, apparently under U.S. control, so that NATO can send this stuff over to Ukraine to be used in the fight against Russia. We've got a lot of things going on, a lot of pieces on the board. Let's see if we can piece it together to figure out what is going on. We can see, of course, we know Ukraine, the country being invaded by the Russians. We've been following these two countries for some period of time. There is a country called Germany, which has a base that is being run by the United States called Rammstein base. And so what's happening is Poland, which is a NATO country, is going to be sending over some aircraft over to Poland, um, from Poland to Germany. And apparently in Germany, where this United States base is, this is going to put these airplanes, these fighter jets under purview of NATO. So we can see it sort of looks like this. We've got Poland, it's going to be sending these old MiGs. I've got a picture of one of these MiG-29s over to Germany at the Rammstein Air Base. We can see the United States then is going to replenish the Polish supply with these brand new F-16s. I don't know how new they are. We're gonna see how uh, what that looks like in a minute, but they're going to replace them. So all of the MiGs that are going from Poland over to Germany gonna be replaced. We see Germany, of course, is going to transfer those MiGs. Ideal, sort of uh, theoretically, is what's happening here is that these are now under NATO control, and this agreement is all still being you know, formed formulated literally as we speak, but Germany is going to be sending theoretically these MiGs over to Ukraine. Ukraine is going to use those same MiGs over against Russia. And you can see, and we've talked about this before here, that there are a lot of consequences for this type of stuff. According to Putin and according to Russia, they say, you know, all of this confusing little uh, transfers to attack us, they say, well, we kind of know really what's happening here. It is just this. I mean, this is really what's what this is like looking like to them. They're saying all of this is nice posturing and maneuvering. And really, this is just one part moving the other part around. But we know what's going on. This is an attack. And they've said stuff like this. Putin saying that even the sanctions that are being imposed against Russia are considerable and akin or equivalent to a declaration of war. This is the official statement that came out from Poland. And it was interesting to hear about this from Poland, not from our own government. They posted this at gov.pl, which is the Polish website for the government, it says the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the statement came out, says the authorities of the Republic of Poland after consultations between the president and the government, meaning their president and their government, are ready to deploy immediately and free of charge all their MiG-29 jets at the Rammstein Air Base, place them at the disposal of the government of the U.S. Huh. Well, that's weird. Why would they just be like, uh, United States, here's the jets. Here's your problem. Uh, we don't want anything to do with this. We've got a lot of issues here talking about no-fly zones over the last 14 days. A lot of questions about military engagement creating, you know, sort of non-kinetic military, non-fly zones. All of these things are talking about airspace. And Putin actively saying sanctions and anybody who's providing arms to the Ukrainian people to combat and kill Russian soldiers are going to be held accountable. But Poland is just going to give all of these planes to the United States. It's just your 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 planes now, you deal with it. At the same time, Poland requests the US to provide us with used aircraft with corresponding operational capabilities. Poland is ready to immediately establish a connection of purchase and to purchase those planes. And the government also requests that all of the other NATO allies out there, anybody else who owns MiG-29 jets, act in the same vein. And this is a very interesting thing that happened because we know that just yesterday, this deal seemed like it was never going to happen. Poland was never going to give these planes up. This was according to Axios. Said, you know, the deal seemed like it was doomed back then. Why it matters, according to Zachary Basu, says Ukrainian President Zelensky pled with people for more jets on Saturday. 300 members saying they wanted a no-fly zone, saying that those jets would be possessed by Poland and the Ukrainian pilots are capable of flying those jets. The U.S. would then send those back. But this is why it wasn't going to work. According to Jen Psaki at the White House, she said the U.S. would, quote, be in no way opposed to Poland's sovereign decision to transfer its planes, but said, you know, there's all sorts of logistical hurdles with all this. We can't just do this willy-nilly. Says those include how the planes would actually enter Ukraine's airspace. This would accelerate a years-long procurement process for a serious weapon system like the F-16. 
right? Big military, you know, arms transfer is happening here. We can see it continues, says the Russians have also been bombing Ukraine airports, increasing the risk of a Russian attack on soil that would have been defended by the alliance. So if there are planes in these areas, right, it's going to likely incur the Russian military's wrath. And this was something we talked about in a prior video, and you can check that out uh, on YouTube following the link up here in the button, wherever the button is. You can see that this was the clip where Anthony Blinken was actually green lighting this transfer. And listen to the way he talks about this. If, for instance, the Polish government, a NATO member, wants to send fighter jets, does that get a green light from the U.S., or are you afraid that that will escalate tension? No, that, that, that gets a green light. In fact, we're talking uh, with uh, our Polish friends right now about what we might be able to do to backfill uh, their needs if, in fact, they choose to provide these fighter jets to, to the Ukrainians. Uh, what could we do? How can we help to make sure that uh, they get something to backfill the planes that they're handing over to, to the Ukrainians? All right. So we can see that that was basically what he was saying was being discussed, but not that it was actually going to happen. I mean, it was not anything that was close to being resolved. And so the statement here kind of came out of left field. This is from the Polish government. We know now that the United States was not really made aware of this, apparently. John Kirby responded on Twitter today, and this happened late on March 8th at 4.17 p.m. says, you know, uh, we're now in contact with the Polish government following their statement issued today. They posted that. We didn't even know it was going to happen, but we finally connected with them. It says, as we have said, the decision about whether to transfer Polish-owned planes to Ukraine is ultimately one for their government, which they apparently discussed, and they made a decision about what to do with these planes. It says, you know, we're going to continue to consult with our allies and partners about our ongoing security assistance to Ukraine because, in fact, Poland's proposals shows just some of the complexities of these issues. This is John Kirby. He's press secretary over at the Pentagon, says the prospect of fighter jets, quote, at the disposal of the government of the United States, which is what the Polish people said, departing from a U.S. NATO base in Germany to fly into airspace that is contested with Russia over Ukraine, raises serious concerns for the NATO alliance. It's like, are you serious? Yeah, of course it does. That's why people are raising their eyebrows at this thing. Poland, here, take the planes, do whatever you want with them. It's like, yo, you want, to, you want us to take those planes and just go start a war with them, we're not interested in those planes for that purpose. And so we've got to have a conversation about this. Kirby says, you know, it is simply not clear to us that there is a substantive rationale for it. Thanks for sending the planes, but do you think that we're going to go over there and start engaging with Russia? And so why would they be sending, why would they be doing that? Hmm. Well, maybe they're tired of Anthony Blinken and others saying that the Polish or that they're allies, you know, their allies are, are allies and partners that they keep saying, they're kind of saying it's your problem. United States saying we're, we're, you know, only today sort of coming out and eliminating the importation of Russian oil and just kind of kind of late to the game on a lot of the sanctions that a lot of other countries were doing. And so they said, well, we support our partners and allies. Poland put the, the ball back in the NATO and the United States court. Oh, yeah. If you're interested in moving all of this forward, here's some planes. Let's see what you do with it. And John Kirby is recognizing, yeah, there's no nothing we're going to do with that. I mean, we've made a decision. We're not going to war with Russia. Says, we will continue to consult with Poland and our other allies about these issues. But there are logistical challenges here. But we do not believe Poland's proposal is a tenable one. We do not believe Poland's proposal is a tenable one. Isn't that interesting? So why are these NATO allies and NATO partners sort of poking back at each other? And did they have a conversation about this before anybody started to transfer, you know, dozens of fighter jets between nations? <sighs> so why do they need all of these planes? Well, Ukraine Air Forces, they're made of MiG-29s and Su jet fighters. And so U.S. warplanes would require a whole new learning curve that they don't have to learn in Ukraine. You can see here, why do they need foreign planes? F-16s are becoming the mainstay of Poland's Air Force, and so they're transitioning them out. So a lot of money to be made in the transfer of these aircraft. You can also see, this is what a MiG-29 looks like. Both of these kind of, you know, they came out right around the same time. First flight for a, the F-16 Falcon over for the United States. 
back in the 1970s. Same thing here back in the later 1970s. But one is a Russian Air Force fighter pilot uh, craft. The other is made by Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics. And so this is all still in service. So a little bit different gear. So what's happening is Poland is going to get rid of these old busters. We don't want those anymore. Get, get rid of them, those Russian communist airplanes. And let's take some of those new uh, F-16s. Now they're not, you know, brand new planes. They're not, you know, the new F-35s or whatever we're working on, but they are you know, obviously uh, something that Poland sees, you know, as an upgrade. They're okay taking it. And why is aircraft so important? We can see here that there's a, a lot of ground to cover and Poland is here. Poland, of course, is the country that is shipping the planes over to Rammstein Air Force Base in Germany. They're sending the planes over there. Apparently, they want them to get fueled up and then just go wage war against Russia in this Ukraine, in the contested zone. And uh, you know, you got to have planes to do that. You got to have you know a lot of uh, capabilities in order to make that happen. Here is what some of the supply chain routes look like for this. You can see here's France, which is sort of a little bit further west of Germany, which is where, you know, which is where this uh, base would be. But George Allison created this graphic, says this is the Western weapons that have been flooding into Ukraine over the last few days. And so you can actually see the flight path on these things. It says the video shows just one day of NATO transport aircraft moving cargo to Poland near the border of Ukraine. The cargo is then moved into Ukraine by road to assist in the fight against Russia. Let's take a look at this. You can see here, and be sure to follow Mr. Allison. You can see a lot of aircraft, and a lot of this stuff comes from OSINT. OSINT is the open source intelligence where people are actually monitoring you know, military craft on uh, public trackers that, that monitor FAA and flight records from uh, different databases from all over the world. You can see a lot of activity, a lot of aircraft, dropping off supplies to support Ukraine. And Putin is not happy about this. We can see that Politico is reporting that he's very angry. This is according to US Intel. Intel heads warned that Russia could double down in Ukraine. The agency leaders agreed Russia would struggle to overcome fierce Ukrainian resistance. This says, according to one US intelligence person, that Vladimir Putin is likely to quote, double down in Ukraine, as his forces remain frustrated nearly two weeks into their invasion. But he's gonna find it especially challenging to maintain control of captured territory and install a sustainable pro-Moscow regime in Kyiv. Top leaders told Congress on Tuesday. You can see this woman was speaking before the House Permanent Select Committee. Her name is Avril Haines. She's the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, saying that, you know, Russians' invasion so far has proceeded consistent with the plan we assessed the Russian military would follow. Only they're facing significantly more resistance from the Ukrainians and they're encountering serious military shortcomings. A lot of this we have been watching and chronicling. Although it still remains unclear whether Russia will pursue a maximalist plan to capture all or most of Ukraine, Haynes said such an effort would run up against the U.S. intelligence community assesses to be a likely persistent and significant insurgency by Ukrainian forces and says that they've proven to show their mettle over the last dozen or so days. And so it turns into one of these wars of attrition. I mean, the United States is very familiar with that. Lost basically two of those over there in the Middle East after a long period of time. Does Russia want to engage in that, especially with these supply chains and these reinforcements coming on a regular basis? I don't know, but we are hearing talks of peace and talks of conditions being set by both sides. And so I know the world is hoping that this resolves with de-escalation, not continued escalation. But as fighter jets are being transferred from country to country, and as everybody continues to demand for more penalties and more sanctions, we have to wonder whether there are some who are just chomping at the bit for more. And I want to hear from you. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Don't forget to like or subscribe or follow or share this video with some friends or family. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.